Uh, Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to share your word, to fellowship, to talk about this topic today of healing and settling. I pray, Father God, that as we are in this uh, conversation, this dialogue, this fellowship, that seeds will be planted as always. I pray seeds will be planted and that healing can be experienced, deliverance can be experienced. In Yeshua's name, we pray. Amen. So, um, like I said, this workbook here on the screen is available for free download um, linked in my bio. It is a 20 page, uh, a 20 page workbook um, that I created uh, stemming from the ministry of Eden Moment Ministry. And like I spoke about the other day, um, Eden Moment Ministry is based on um, Genesis 2 and 25. They were naked and unashamed. So my whole goal, my whole um, desire is through Eden Moment Ministry, not only myself, but others can get free and learn who we truly are in the Most High and begin to start living the lives that he ordained for us, right? And in order for us to get to that place, we have to strip the layers. One of the pages in, okay, now it's cold over here. Um, <laughs> one of the pages in um, in the the workbook, it actually talks about it talks about layers and how we need to strip off the layers in order to be truly who he has called us to be. And one of those layers that I want to talk about today is the characteristic of settling. Um, so again, we're gonna talk about why do we settle? Oh man, I forgot my questions. I'm not going back in the building, that's too much, okay. So basically opening up with uh, asking the question, why do we settle? And I actually have a theory or a question just to throw out there. Is it, is it that we settle because we lack identity? Like is settling in any way uh, connected to not have an identity? Because when you know who you are, when you know what you have access to, you're not going to put up with certain things, right? Um, so for example, if I know that a gourmet, meal, a gourmet meal is coming my way, why would I waste calories by eating something I don't want, right? So um, if I have a car, why would I waste time calling a taxi or calling an Uber? I know what I have access to why would i choose anything else and a lot of times this whole aspect of settling it's um it's like counterfeit sometimes we go for the counterfeit instead of the original so that's my question today and for those who like to journal right that would be a journal prompt why do we settle if you yourself settle why do you settle where does that come from where did this start and like I said, you know, I truly believe, well, if, if I'm if I'm speaking for myself, if I look at um, where I have come from, like if I look at, um, you know, my history of, you know, bad relationships, bad decisions, a lot of it, I think, stemmed from, like I was saying the other day in our other live where I talked about, <clears throat> the rejection spirit the orphan spirit so i did <clears throat> excuse me i did certain things to fill the void so when it comes to settling i settled because this is what was the here and now i wanted the here and now and i wasn't looking toward the future and like the the post that i did this morning where i talked about a lot of times we feel empty, we feel isolated, we feel depressed because we have no hope. There's no hope for the future, right? So why do we settle? And of course, you know, you can answer that question, um, you know, if you want to journal it out, why have you settled in your past? What was the reason why you chose the counterfeit over the original? right and two people came to mind when i was like jotting out my notes that i left in my office um <laughs> that i'm not going back in there to get but 
Sarah, Sarah and Hagar, where Sarah basically didn't want to wait for the promise right and now her story is a little different she knew she knew the promise if i if i'm recalling the story correctly she knew the promise she knew what god said and a lot of times we know what the most high says but then why again this question why do we settle if we know the promise why do we still settle is it because we're uncomfortable in the waiting right um and honestly, like, again, speaking for myself, I feel like in my situation, a lot of how I came up and before I really, truly started walking right, where before I really, truly started um, walking in true abstinence, right, I was settling. I was settling for uh, the feel good that didn't last, right? Um, and I didn't know me. I didn't know myself. I didn't know, um, I didn't know who I was in the father. Right. Um, but yeah. So, and of course, again, the book that I posted is linked in my bio. Um, if anyone wanted to read my testimony, it is available on Amazon, um, ebook and in print. Um, and like I said, this one here is actually um, available for free download. So let me just go over a few of those, um, a few of those pages. Um, so as it opens up, I basically, like I said, I explain Eden Moment Ministry. Um, and I said, Eden Moment Ministry is based on Genesis 2 and 25 that says Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. This ministry is where we take those moments to become naked before God so that we can experience healing, self-love, and true identity as he purposed for our lives. And like I said the other day, it's like when you think of the, and that's why I'm calling this live the Eden moment. Like we're sitting in our gardens, we're, we're tending to our Edens, we're tending to our gardens by having these sometimes difficult conversations. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the ministry. And then um, I say becoming naked before God, again, free download, LinkedIn bio, um, as we were intent, originally intended, brings us to our true identity. There are steps that we must take to strip the layers, to love ourselves, and to return to Eden to take possession of our rightful place and identity. I pray that every hidden seed that has been planted, grown, and that has taken root within this person reading this workbook be exposed and uprooted in Jesus' name. I pray that anything harmful that this root caused to negatively alter this person's life identity and purpose be destroyed and to never cause any further harm and then i say now is your turn to pray before we begin and i have a prayer that when you download it you'll see that the prayer where you're praying yourself through this experience you're praying yourself through the healing so what time So let me hit uh, bullet point number three, my herpes testimony. Um, and like I said, the question is already there. Uh, is settling connected to lack of identity? My lack of identity, my lack of self-love is what um, brought me to the place where now I have a herpes testimony, right? When it comes to settling, like I was talking about the other day, it was because of the void, because of um, the depression, that need and desire and addiction to need love. It was like I would settle for for any type of, a, not any type, but excuse me, I settled for situationships. Let's, let's say that. I settled for situationships because I looked at it like, oh, well, he's coming over. He's spending time with me. He called me beautiful. He texted me at least once this week. Then it was like this, this, like I said, um, this thing of me settling. Like, at least I have somebody. Like, that's 
pretty much what it was. It was a, well, at least I have somebody. At least somebody um, loves me. And so I was putting my abstinence on hold, putting God on hold to give in to these situationships. And the other reason why, like, I call it, um, the other reason why I call it settling is because a few of these people, they were not even trying to commit to me. They weren't trying to commit. They just wanted I was going to say something. Let me not say that. That's not, it's not Christ-like, but yeah, it, it's the truth. They didn't want to commit. They just wanted to have happy time pretty much. Um, and the one like they, in the herpes community, um, they call it the gifter, basically who gave you this diagnosis. So my gifter would not give me a title. He just wanted to spend time with me and it was just a matter of, um, well, you know how that whole cliche thing, well, why ruin a good thing or why do we need a title? I settled because I needed the last person that was giving me love, attention and affection. He wasn't acting right. So I needed that love, attention, and affection. And this new person that came in onto the scene, I settled. I settled. And you would think in my mind, like going through the various relationships, failed relationships, failed marriages, right? Choosing wrong. It took me catching herpes for me to finally be like, oh, I see my worth and value. That's backwards as all get out. It's so, so backwards, but it's true. That is my truth. That is my testimony. And the reason why is because I looked at it like, wow. Of all of the people that I fell for, gave my body to, the one that, well, not the one, because it was, it was different ones that wasn't giving me a title, but the one that I least expected it is the one that put my life in harm's way. And there was something I was thinking about the other day that, um, I don't, I don't think I could say this word, but safe intimacy is not safe if it's in sin. So as a believer, if we are fornicating, right? And we're like, oh, well, I'm safe because I'm on birth control. I'm safe because I use condoms. No, no, that for the, and this is, this is my take on, it. I just look at it like the covering of protection is not there. You may be protected physically. You think you're protected physically, but where is the covering of the most high? If we are out there just living willy nilly and I don't mean like, you know, thought button. I don't mean like that because sometimes you can have a situation where a situation ship where you trust the person and I truly trusted this person, but I was still being safe. We were still using protection and it still happened to me. It still happened to me. Right. So again, this settling, I settled and me settling is what got me there. Me settling is what got me there because I also look at it like if we if we were to be real, if you do want to be out there just living any old kind of way, if you want to be out there living any old kind of way, why choose a person that's not adding to your life? Why choose a person that is not even giving you a title? That's not even committing to you. That's not even letting the world know that you're their person, right? That's the messed up thing about it. That's why I look at it like that last relationship encounter, physical relationship encounter, I settled. And look at what it got me, right? Now, I was um, interviewed for the, the Sexless Tribe. Uh, podcast well it's actually it's actually a group but I was interviewed and 
um, in the interview, I did share that though this is my diagnosis, though when I go to the doctor and it shows like, okay, it's still on my panel, I literally half the time forget that I even have it, right? I literally forget that I have it because it doesn't affect me physically like it used to, right? And I feel like that is God giving, it sounds weird, but he's giving me grace where it's like, yeah, you, you have it, but I won't allow you to suffer because you are now walking right. Does that make sense? So again, going back to the question, why do we settle? Where does settling get us, right? where does it get us is it ever a benefit to settling the other person that um at the beginning i talked about uh sarah and abraham sarah ignored the promise and instead she settled thank you for the hearts she settled and was like well no i'm gonna do it this way so instead of me waiting instead of me continuing on my abstinence journey i would continue breaking it I would continue slipping, falling, slipping, falling, slipping, falling because somebody was giving me attention. I was trying, okay, well, I'm going to stay single. I'm not going to talk to anybody. Okay, we could just be friends. Okay, I'm going to do it one time. And then it's in this, it's this repetitive cycle until they don't want my free snacks and Wi-Fi anymore and they go back to their baby mama type situation, right? Um, I settled. So the other thing, like I said, is settling connected to a lack of identity because I did not have that sense of pride, that sense of honor for myself. I allowed these things to happen. I allowed these things to happen. Um, and this is where I am now. Like I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm whole, I'm healthy. Um, despite what comes up on my panel, like that doesn't, it doesn't bother me like it did before. And I feel like that was that guilt and shame that the enemy tried to put on me um, to make me feel a way, to make me feel like I wasn't worthy. But again, again, the importance of identity, the importance of identity, like, when you know who you are your past thank you for the hearts when you know who you are your past doesn't matter your past mistakes doesn't matter good afternoon how are you um your past mistakes doesn't matter um so before the bad decisions before the bad decisions identity is important after the bad decisions identity is important right and that's what has kept me going all of this time so that is a question for everybody those who are here and those that will watch the replay like what is it what areas of your life do you settle now of course i'm specifically speaking about my herpes testimony right and what led up to those bad decisions that makes it where i have that testimony now um i am thank you thank you i'm glad you're good um what what areas of your life do you settle in is it relationships is it settling for counterfeit people whether it's friends or ministries or uh romantic relationships do you settle in your career do you settle where it's like you know what i don't feel like going to school or i feel like i can't go back to school i feel like i can't go to trade school and learn a trade so i'm just gonna settle i'm just gonna do whatever that's a form of settling and again if you know who you are you know what you have access to you won't put up with the stuff that you put up with and i'm saying that and i'm saying that for myself as well what is it that you're settling for in your life what can you do what can you physically do today that will keep you from settling or if you're in a settling situation right what can you do today to change that what can you do today to change that 
because my thing is let's say there is a king or queen right it's a king or queen they know the power they have they know the access they have they know who they are so when things happen in the kingdom right they're not going to put up with it and like I, I watch I think they're called like period pieces where it's like movies that are um put out like for certain time time decades or whatever and of course you know in those movies sometimes they'll say how dare you not bow before me they know who they are so they demand someone to bow before them if they didn't know that they were a king or queen they couldn't make that demand right so as children of the most high why do we put up with stuff and I'm not saying like someone's supposed to bow before us, but there is respect to be had, right? We need to honor ourselves, even if it has nothing to do with anybody else, nothing to do with anybody else. Do we have respect for ourselves? Do we have respect for the most high God? So if we put it in that, in that viewpoint, we are children of the most high. He has blessed us. He has protected us. He has delivered us. He has provided for us. Why would we, knowing that we are within his grouping of children, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a word. Why would we allow someone to enter into that space and to cause damage or hurt, abuse, or anything negative to us? If I go back talking about my testimony if back then if i would have had the love and respect that i have for myself now it ain't no way that brother would have been touching me and i ain't have even a title and i'm not saying i would have did it if i had a title. but you see what i'm saying like it's just a matter of the respect you when you know who you are you respect yourself so here's another we can we can think of like so many different analogies right so if you have a home and it's decorated in all white i use this example a lot you have a home and it's it's decorated in all white you know that you've put a lot of work into your home you know that if anything happens in your home where someone tracks mud or dirt in there you know there's a lot of work to clean it up so what would you do what would you do to avoid dirt and mud being tracked in there on your white carpet you, your white carpet your white furniture what would you do if it were me i would make sure that there's protective barriers that will keep that dirt or mud from coming into my whitely furnished home and I feel like as identity learning of our identity we are that white home we are pure we are sanctified we are living holy living righteous so the question is if you know that when you know that you know you're not going to allow unrighteousness, impurity to come into your life. Back then, I didn't have that mindset. I did not have that identity. I didn't have that respect for myself. And the other question that I forgot was on my worksheet, my little thing I, I, I wrote out today, is it that we settle sometimes because we feel like we don't deserve it that is like a real question is it that we settle sometimes because we feel like we don't deserve it so if you know you don't have the access you're not going to show up at the building if you are a manager of a building you have all of the keys you can show up when you want to but if you don't have the keys and you don't have the position, you won't show up to the building, right? So again, the question, 
Is it that we settle because we feel like we don't deserve it? We feel like we don't have the access. We feel like we're not allowed. We're not supposed to, right? So that's just my thoughts on it. Again, this workbook is um, available for free download, linked in my bio, where, like I said, it goes through various um, various questions and you know, helping to even myself, like sometimes when I read back through it, I'm like, yeah, I, I need to like really evaluate that. Right. So like um, one, the very first question is the uh, is your identity being shaped by God or man? Um, and then I have the uh, the prompt there where it says, learn who God says you are. Take a look at these quick scriptures that explain who you are. And I have, hey, and I have um, the next page. Uh, I think this is the old copy, but the new one, I believe it's, uh, it's up there. But it's a page of like tons of scriptures on um, who God says you are. And again, I feel like my theory is when you know who you are, you won't put up, you don't, you wouldn't put up with the same stuff you may have put up with before you knew who you were. I put up with a lot, a lot, which if, if those same situations occurred now, if those same, God bless them, God bless them if somebody tried it. But then I also feel like, I won't be putting those scenarios.